Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, today's wine, Chateau d'Esclin, Les Clins. Uh, now, Chateau d'Esclin makes, um, they make four different rosés, and this is the next to the top of the tree. And what they do is the, uh, the two, uh, well, we're in, we're in summer 2014 here, uh, the current releases are the bottom two, I don't call, hesitate to call them the bottom two, but uh, wines three and four, they're on the 2013 vintage of those. Uh, this one and Garus, the top one, uh, they're on 2012 because they've spent time in barrel. Uh, what does that do to a rosé? Well, let's taste it and find out. What I'm getting, uh, maybe the most noticeable thing that, that I, I've got coming through here, yes, there's a little bit of red fruit, yes, there's a little bit of um, uh, maybe something uh, on the crisper side, maybe some apple, but it's more the... Um, earthy, sometimes I call it sandy in uh, in Provence. Uh, this her real herby character that's uh, that's carrying it through. Sometimes I get it particularly strongly in in the white wines of Provence. And here, um, I mean the 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 aging in oak barrels. It hasn't added any smokiness or toastiness to the wine. But what it's done is it's got uh, maybe it's got some of those red fruit flavours and calmed them down slightly. Uh, so you're getting much more of the character of the soil coming through and uh, it smells pretty good and uh, my experience with uh, this in previous vintages and uh, the Garus which I tasted uh, a, a few days ago is it's one of those that you just keep swirling and, uh, and it, more and more layers come out and uh, almost rosé that you want to decant. So let's taste it. And it uncurls in your mouth uh, and I'm not sure what the alcohol is here. 14%. It has got, it's got a real presence of um, and power about it, but it's got this delicacy. And it's, it's, it's like in, in lovely tension. There's a crisp side. There's a herby, I was going to say herby side, but not. it's got herby side in it. It has a herby character about it. Uh, there's the red fruit side. There's the um, uh, on, uh, apple side. Uh, but there's this weight and presence as well. Um, I can't remember when they started uh, d making these wines. I don't think they've got any that are as yet 10 years old, but it feels like a wine that um, has got um, everything there to help it age for maybe up to 10 years, and not many, not many rosés you can say that about. Um, uh, but I like it as it is, and um, I think I'm going to like it um, probably about 4 o'clock in the afternoon here. I think I'm going to like it more come 7 o'clock. Uh, I think it will have had a chance to... Uh, uh, to grow and um, I, th I expect some of the richer flavours to come through but I expect also different nuances. Um, I suppose it's a bit like um, uh, if you've got if you're a good band that has got um, a, a, a long history of, of, uh, of making music uh, if someone goes to see them on one particular night they'll have a great night uh, and they'll play two hours or so, you go and see them six months later and it may be that they play some of the same songs but it may be that they throw others in there as well. So there's this, the um, similar bit of the same quality but then there's other facets that you didn't see the first time around and equally some facets in the young wine that you didn't see in the older one. Um, and um, I, I think it, I, it's pretty good wine that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it comes at a price. I mean, I, I think the, the goal of the Sacha Lachine who, uh, uh, who has put uh, Chateau d'Esclam back on the, uh, on the map, his goal was to make the best rosé in the world. Um, and Garus, it's funny, I think about Garus compared with this. Uh, Garus feels maybe it's got slightly higher cheekbones, but this has got maybe a little bit more of a sense of fun and feistiness. Uh, they're both really good and... Um, I'm going to enjoy finishing this bottle. See you soon.